Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and over there is Christopher Draves. Hey, guys. What's going on, man? Why do you say that? Anyway, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Tyron Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They will outfit you with all your hockey needs from player gear to fandom gear. And if you want to be a referee, they can cover that too, except for they will not have an icing chart. But I'm pretty sure there's some eye doctor places around the area. You can go get that done. <laughs> you don't need vision to be a referee. <laughs> Anyway, right. Anyways, yeah. um, before we get into our show, I would like to um, wish uh, Miku Koivu, uh, of, uh, formerly of the Minnesota Wild, uh, uh, happy retirement. Uh, happy retirement, 16 years in the NHL, over 1,000 games played. Um, I'm uh, as much of a Preds fan as I am, I did enjoy watching him play. Uh, he was a good player of Minnesota. He really was. Yeah, I just think towards the latter part of his years, it definitely showed. Yeah. Um, also, congratulations to Matthias Eckholm. Him and his wife welcomed the new baby. Girl. Girl. Thank you. I couldn't remember if it was a boy or a girl. I just know that they had their baby last night and Eckholm was in the lineup tonight. Correct. And I will be, we will be doing an editorial after this that will be dropping sometime Sometime Today. in the daylight. Yeah, sometime. <laughs> it's like after midnight currently. Yeah, we've been scrapping and clawing and tech issues and yeah, don't let's not get into it. The yeah, game as was, you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just stats. Uh is that my key? Yeah. All right. Predators outshot the lightning 33 to 30. That's a pointless stat nowadays. Uh 51%. Uh, Predators, 49% for the Lightning on face-off. I really don't look into that either. Uh, like usual, Predators 0 for 4 power play. Lightning 3 for 5. No big shocker there. 22 penalty minutes. Were the referees calling every little ticky-tack foul possible on the Predators tonight? But the Predators had 22 penalty minutes. Lightning had 10. Uh, the hits were even 24, well, basically even, it was 24 to 20 for the Lightning, so it wasn't a huge uh, discrepancy between the two. Block shots were 15-11 for the Lightning, and giveaways 6-5 for the Lightning. Yeah, it, it was just, meh. Go, Dan. <laughs> All right, I will, because trust me, you guys are going to want to watch our editorial. I'm telling you now. Yeah. All right. Um, scoring in the first period for the first time in the year, um, the Predators kind of tried to take the initiative in things. We'll talk about how well that went. Uh, Rocco Grimaldi scored his second of the year at the fourth 43 mark of the first with an assist from Sean Malone. Sean Malone's first NHL point. Congratulations, kid. Um, then uh, also with his first assist of the year, Kelly Yarncroft. Uh, one thing to be noted, um, if you actually look at uh, the celebration from Rocco Grimaldi, he looked dead at the bench, dead near the coach, and shrugged his shoulders. Wait a minute. Um, it was one of those things that was noticeable. You, He looked right at the bench and kind of went, Lines has been benching him left and right, and he goes into the game and scores the first goal, and he's just like, eh. Yeah, yeah. is this going to give me more playing time? Is that what you're trying to get at, Dan? Yeah, well, guess what? After that, he had, uh, for game time on ice, after that, he had, after that, he had five minutes of ice time. Wow. Yeah, I think maybe it's time for the coach to go, but we'll get into that later. All right, keep it going. Let's finish it All up. right, then scoring at the 11:28 mark was Steven Stamkos, his sixth of the year, with an assist from Braden Point, his eighth, and Mikhail Sergachev, his seventh. Sergachev's riding a seven-game point streak. Yeah, I was going to say, Sergachev's been playing really good this year. 
He is, really and, and that was at the eleven twenty eight mark. Yeah, I'm glad to have him on my fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, then we have Andre Palat at the uh, 12 31 mark on the power play. His fifth of the year with an assist from Stamkos, his seventh and point his ninth. Then Matthew Joseph scored in, at the 1403 mark, his third of the year with an assist from Sergachev, his eighth, and Maroon, his second. Scoring in the third. Yanni Gord, his fourth, with an assist from Sergachev, his ninth, and Hedman, his eighth. Um, then uh, Steven Stamkos at the 1434 mark of the third on the power play, his seventh, with an assist from Point, his tenth, and Palat, his third. And we want to hear something interesting about Sergachev. He has zero goals and nine assists this year. Yeah. Uh, then we have Matthew Joseph scoring at the 1620 mark, his fourth with an assist from Hedman, his ninth, and Volkov, his second. That was on the power play. Um, I pretty much tuned out and listened to the game about the time Yanni Gord scored because that rebound should not have been given up by Soros. Soros, that rebound got you on my crap list. I will explain in a minute. I'm Let's, impressed. You're not swearing it. Um, Andre Vasilevsky was in net for the Lightning. Um, after getting days rest, he had started nine games straight. Yeah. That is why he did not play yesterday. Oh, okay. He stopped 32 at 30, 33 with a point nine seven zero save percentage. Hit net for the Predators was UC Soros. He stopped 19 to 22, even strength, five of eight on the power play, and 24 of 30 overall with a 0 .800 save percentage. All right, so we will be getting into a few things on our editorial video. Soros is definitely going to be one of them. The reason Saros is on the crap list tonight, he gave that rebound up and it went right onto the guy's stick and into the back of the net. As a former goalie, you do not just do that. You can't do that. It does not happen. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to try and knock it into the corner, cover it, any means necessary. Yeah, that was a basic uh, hockey move and he uh, blew it. Um, your referees for the night were uh, Chris Lee and Peter McDougall. Um, linesmen were Julian Fournier and Vaughn Rodet. Let's not get into that again. <laughs> um, head coach for Tampa Bay is John Cooper. Head coach for Nashville is... Not for long. <laughs> well, we'll get into that in the other video. Uh, John, just go, just go. Uh, Tampa Bay's scratch was Callahan Foot, uh, Adam Foot's son, one of two. Uh, scratches for Nashville: Nick Cousins, Jared Tenardi, and Eric Paula. Oof, that's a lot of grit to not have in the lineup against a team who likes to use speed. Hmm. Not for long. I'm <clears throat> just saying. All right. Anyways, uh, anything else with this? All right, crap list. Oh, boy. The whole, whole team. team. I don't care if you were a plus in this game. I don't. You cannot get outplayed this badly three games in a row. In this short of a season, it just can't happen. Basically, right now, Preds, you're telling us you're playing for ping pong balls. Without having the guts to admit it. If, if <clears throat> this is the way we're going to go, the coach's job is to motivate them to win. This team has the skill and ability to do so. They've proven it. But I have some other things that I will talk about shortly. You'll understand more in the editorial like i said we're going to dive deeper into this the one problem i have with this team currently is 
the leadership doesn't seem to want to lead right now. The coaching doesn't want to coach or change their coaching to adapt to uh, different systems. The GM is uh, showing a lack of consistency with the players that he is signing. Oh, I want speed. I want grit. I want youth. I want old people. I, um, Pick them um, stick with it. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to get it? Yeah. You need consistency because right now this team has none. There's no. Right, anyway, eh, save your energy for the next video. Remember, you're going to need um, that fire for the next video. I know. And I'm going to say this in the next video. This team is consistently inconsistent. Yeah. Oh, right. God, that sounds familiar. Uh, last year and the year before and the year before. Yeah, yeah. Look, I understand. On a normal season, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And now this year it's a sprint, so you got to adapt or get ran over, and they're getting ran over. And that is that is not looking good for that. So we will be getting into more of that. One thing I will dive into in this video because I do want to leave it out of the next video. And that's just strictly because of who we play next. We play on Thursday, the Detroit Red Wings. The Detroit Red Wings are an American Hockey League franchise that plays an NHL schedule. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say it that way. Sorry. Um, no, the Detroit Red Wings have more cups than us, so we could be quiet right now. Yeah, but it's still fun to make fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, I make fun of them because they've been rebuilding since, you know, 2011. <laughs> there you go. You joined in on the phone. Nah, but, but legit, I used to support the Red Wings. They they do have a good history. So just having a little fun, taking shots at them because people like taking shots at the Preds all the time. Anyway, uh, they played 14 games. They are 3-9-2. and two. If they win one game against us, we're done. And it's like early as hell in the year, but we're done. If they win one game against us and take one to OT and win, they're ahead of us by a point. They are the differential between Nashville and Detroit is four goals. Hey, but with the way the year's going, uh, points might not matter. Remember, win percentage will be used in the event that not every team plays the full 56 games. So that might save us from being in the basement. Oh, we can only hope. Hey, to, if there's a will, there's a way. Um, however, um, that's that's really where it comes down to. Um, Nashville's played one less game. Um, I believe that's because Carolina's game got canceled. Oh, who? Uh, the Carolina game. Yeah, that's like the only game the Preds have had canceled. Yeah, so that's the only reason they're one game back. Where we would be, who knows? Yeah. All right. But if this you like our video, subscribe to us on YouTube. Click that little bell to get notified every time we post a video. Like us and follow us on Facebook. Tell your friends. Let's get our numbers up. Dan, go. Hey, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville for Dad and Chris. Later.